Hi, I'm Tim Grant. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, inversions of chords, um, mostly related in the realm of rhythm guitar. Um, we're going to give you a little exercise to do up the neck. Um, and then I'm going to kind of ramble a little bit after that because I think this exercise will do a lot to develop other things in your playing. So let's just start out. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do two chords. One I have never covered before is a B. Um, and I'm going to explain that in a little bit. And then the other is a D. Um, and today we're just going to talk about um, where to put in, it's just where you can change um, the location because a lot of times you may be playing with other players a lot of times uh, some people may be playing these root kind of areas you know, and you don't want to um, step on their toes or you want to like put in a little bit something a little bit different uh, so you know you may want to put that that was a B and an E there uh, or, or we could do it here find some different places all B's and E's um, same chords just different places um, and it gives you if you're playing with a band it gives you a little bit more depth um, so basically what I'm doing and uh, is um, using the shapes of uh, one two three four five five different chords all chords we've talked about in the past um, a lot of people you will hear uh, a system called caged um, and that is C A G E and D and and what that is is those shapes can be played all over the neck and they're playing different chords so for example if I just play the D and moved it up to that's an E you're just playing the bottom three move it up one more that's an F you just got to make sure you're not playing all the notes not that okay some of them are pretty if you do play all of them like the like a C chord but then that we're starting to get into rub notes and those are cool we'll talk about those later but um so those those are the chords we're focusing on C G A E and D spells out caged uh and so um so that B chord I'm playing that's actually an A um the A chord I'm playing is this and so if you just look at the shape so you've got the fifth string open, and then second fret, uh, fourth string, second fret, third string, second fret, second string, and open. Let's just play the three on strings four, three, and two. Let's not play the, any of the other ones. Okay? Now if I move that up, that's a B. You can put this here too, and if you move this open string up two frets, that's playing like you're open. So now this is acting as this nut here. And just play the E string, I mean the A string, the fifth string, the fourth string, the third string, and the second string. Don't play the first string, because it's a, not a note in the chord. If you really do want to play the first string, then you need to make that A shape and then bar with this finger on the first string on the second fret. Um, but I usually, a lot of times when you're playing up higher, I usually just play three or four strings. Um, so we've, we're playing that B and an E. Okay, let's do a second inversion. So that's your A shape. Let's look at our G shape. Our G shape, let's not worry about these top two strings, let's worry about the fourth. Fourth string, third string, second string, and first string. We can actually bring it all down. So, 
so let's take off the uh, second fret. Let's just play the first, I'm sorry, the second string, third fret. We're gonna take it off, because it's the same, it, it's the chord, it's the same chord, it's just taking out the third, and really when you're only playing the bottom three on a, on a G, that's uh, that B note right there on the second string. You're not gonna be playing that. You need to reproduce the B, which is the second string open. Hope I'm not getting too confusing here. Okay, so there's your G chord. All right, now we're gonna move it up and we're gonna move it to part of, we're gonna move it up four frets and that's now a B chord again. Okay, so what you're doing is you've got three frets away, open, four frets, one, open, so your finger would be here, second, third, fourth, okay? Almost there, one more, that was a B flat, there's your B, and I'm only playing the bottom three. So this follows the G shape. Okay, your A shape was back here, which was very similar, and then if you wanted to, that one, okay, but your G shape is here, so you're adding another note, a little bit higher, okay, there's your B, and then where would the E be? So the E is actually going to be your C shape, watch this, that's your C, C chord, we're going to bring our fingers down, replace them like that, and this is going to be your nut, so we're going to move it up, and there's your E. Okay, so I don't play this note, I just leave that out, and I'm actually just playing the bottom four strings. That's a C chord, but you're playing an E. Okay, it's a C shape, but you're playing an E. Okay, so again, there's your uh, there's your B chord using the G shape. There's your E chord using the C shape. Okay, and you can actually add that note because that would be like if you were playing a C with the, the G in the bottom. It's just adding a different note from the chord. That's your G, your fifth. Okay. So now we got two inversions. Actually, we have three. We have uh, there's that B, and then this one, um, which I'm using. I'm, I'm leaving space for that note there. Okay, and then we've got the G shape. And I can leave this down and you get another inversion. You're just adding an extra note in there. You're not adding an extra note. You're just putting a different chord tone in there. All right, now we're moving to the next one, which is the another B on the seventh fret. And what this is right here, so if I take this nut away, remember we're using this finger as a nut, and then I take this shape, move it down there. Look at that, that's an E chord. All right, so if you take your E chord, almost there, <laughs> there we go, to the seventh fret, that is a B again, okay, and then our E chord is going to be like the old B, which is your A shape, which you could do like this, or you could do like this and just not play the first string. That's my first string I'm playing right there. I've got it blocked off. Okay, so I usually just, like I said before, I usually just do two or, or three or four uh, strings at a time. Because a lot of times when you're playing with a, um, other, other guitar players and other chordal instruments, you're going to have all kinds of notes all over the place. So you could be a lot more simpler. Um, so we are... B, E, okay, and then we're going to do another, we're going to do the G shape on the E, okay, and then we're going to use the C shape 
to play the B again, and then the E shape to play the E. And that's it. And so what you want to do is just establish a rhythm. Where you're just going back and forth. You don't even have to do it as fast as I am. And then make a switch. That's my B chord using the E shape, I mean G shape, to E chord using the C shape. That's my B chord using the E shape. And this is my E chord using the A shape. Now I'm going to move to the G shape. Just practice up and down the neck. And you get yourself used to doing that kind of thing. And just moving it around. And remember, you don't have to play all the strings. Just pick three strings. Back to the B. other thing that is the end of the lesson if you want to you can stop listening right now but I want to tell you about the other cool things about getting to know the chords in different inversions um, because you do a couple of things one of them is you're developing your ear uh, so you can hear you want to you want to learn to hear that's an E chord you also want to go Okay, that's an E chord too, and that's an E chord, and that's an E chord, that's an E chord, that's an E chord, that's an E chord. So, get your ear used to hearing chords in different inver inversions, and, um, and that's good. The other thing is, it teaches you the relationships between chords when you start adding in fills or soloing um, you can tell uh, if you watch and listen how certain notes move there's a B chord and then I'm moving one finger up and another finger up too see how close that is that's your E chord now so if you're soloing, you can actually almost play anything you want. And then you you land on the next chord because they're all close by. So um, to know scales in that at that point um, because as long as you end on a chord tone you can almost play anything you want as long as you time it right look I'm playing I'm playing a chromatic scale right into it. there's a couple of notes not in that scale but it doesn't matter because I'm ending there you're gonna have to use your ear a little bit and say, okay, that's not real good if I like that, but if if you're going, you know, like that direction, so you just kinda of have to play with it, use your own time, um, and it, it develops your ear and it kinda of gives you a little when you're doing rhythm sometimes, you know, if there's a break, you need to have some kind of fill. Um, and like a drummer, you gotta you got to choose the right time to do it. You don't want to do your fill while somebody's singing or the melody's going on. But there's a little break. You can use that little technique. Just to put in a little, something a little extra. You know, 
make it interesting. So play along with it. Um, it is a good way to start your way into soloing. Don't worry about the middle notes. Just look for the end notes and, and you gotta time it right. If it's not timed right, it's gonna sound weird, but uh, you'll get used to it. All right, I hope that helps. Um, I will put this on my website, timgrantguitar.com, uh, and um, I'll probably put it under the chord section or something like that. So um, please like and follow. Thank you.